Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Eye the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, King D.L., Lauren Frey, Grim Clover, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. And today, we are doing a reaction video to this uh, random YouTube video that popped up in my feed upon searching the phrase Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo, does Nintendo have a Mario sports problem? Oof. Like clickbait titles. Oh man, there's a problem with the Mario sports games. Like even though the um, Tennis Aces did very well, Super Rush did very well, uh, Strikers is going to do very well. Like uh, the narrative among Nintendo's has lately been that Nintendo is mishandling the Mario sports IP. That's right. Rather than rather than bitch about Paper Mario, like these Spurgs seem to have moved on to uh, the Mario sports games. Like. Presumably because Mario Strikers like triggered a sort of autism, uh, sort of triggered autism in its audience. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, the the reason why Paper Mario fans were so were so salty about uh, games moving away from the Thousand Year Door and uh, Super Paper Mario was because of the narrative shift. Uh, in particular, like the the games becoming lighter again after like getting increasingly dark, and uh, that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And I personally love Super Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door, but I but I also like the the newer games as well. So uh, the the complaining never made any sense to me, but to a lot of people, like the games should have like stayed the way they were or got even darker, and that that triggered this like years long backlash of people like pretending that the the newer Paper Mario games were trash. That that's only just now started to be like laughed at by the community at large. So now it seems like the same people have kind of migrated onto, like, the Mario sports games. Uh, like, Charged was a lot edgier than Battle League. So <laughs> the Mario sports game uh, had the same response that the that the RPG did. So uh, let, let's have a look and see at Mario. Does Nintendo have a Mario sports world? Hello there, everybody. How are you doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to talk about a fairly hot button topic that's happening right now that revolves around the Mario sports titles. Obviously, this is kind of being discussed because of the recent release of Mario Strikers Battle League. Mario Strikers Battle League is the long awaited follow up in the Mario Strikers series that people have been asking for for a very long time. I believe it's the third in the series. I've only played the original one that released. Um, but I do believe that this is the third. I think there was a GameCube, a Wii game, and now the Switch game, which is Battle. This is the kind of person who's and making videos this about this, by the way. Production and Next Level Games is a great studio, very talented. They've made some fantastic games in the Nintendo and Mario verse, such as the second Luigi's Mansion game and, of course, Mario Strikers. And so this was very exciting. In fact, Next Level Games, of course, now purchased and owned by Nintendo. So this was a game, a new entry in this franchise that people have been waiting for for a very long time. It was announced earlier this year and had a lot of hype and buzz. And now that it's come out and the reviews have been going around and everyone's played the demo and kind of understands what's happening with this game, it becomes the third Mario Sports title in a row, all in the Switch era, to be a little bit underwhelming for most people. Of course, the three Mario Sports titles that have released on the Nintendo Switch is Mario Tennis Aces, Mario Golf Super Rush, and then now Mario Strikers Battle. The only real problem, the only one of those three that I say has a problem is Super Rush, and that's really only because of the Rush mode, which just doesn't work for golf. Like, that, that just gets really tedious. Uh, Tennis Aces was fine, and Battle League is fine. Uh, there, there's nothing wrong with these sports games. Battle League. And the conversation, like I said in the beginning here, that everyone is having is the fact that in the Switch era with all of these Mario Sports titles that have released, they seem to not be the best at releasing fully featured, fully fleshed out, content rich experiences and games, specifically with these Mario Sports titles, which is a little bit weird and it's not really typical for Nintendo to do this. They're normally known for having a good amount of content in their games, fully finished, fully polished, complete and ready to release at the time that they do release. And so it has people very confused on what's going on. So what exactly is missing from, from any of those sports games we talked about? Like, I don't even think Super Rush had a ton of updates after it launched to begin with. Like... Uh, 
Like I, th- I thought everything was tennis aces. I never bothered waiting around for the uh, for the updates because I had already finished uh, playing the game by the time the updates started rolling around. So like Battle League, uh, like I I think it has plenty of content. Like there's nothing missing from these games. Going on with these games and why they're not releasing in the most complete states or in the most fully featured state. And again. When you look at even their multiplayer experiences, typically that is the case, right? I mean, Smash Brothers is a great example that comes bursting at the seams, or Mario Kart that comes bursting at the seams with content. And yes, then there is amazing paid additional DLC for both of those franchises. That is fantastic in its own right. Splatoon has kind of teetered the line, I think, between Splatoons 1 and 2, but overall still considered very good, fun games with extra content to play as well. But specifically, Smash Brothers and Mario Kart has always been fantastic. And to my knowledge, all the previous entries of Mario Strikers and Mario Golf and Mario Tennis doesn't really have as many entries. Those have also released That's fully the, featured what? because they put wait, 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 wait. back to... Tennis came up before Golf, didn't it? If I'm uh, not much mistaken, I, I think so. You know, prior to when Nintendo was even doing DLC for their games, so they came out pretty complete. But we again, we come to these three Mario sports titles released on the Switch. It was around the same time. I've seen Nintendo really step up to the plate the way most people are used to. Now, here's the thing. For myself, I can tell you that I have not yet played Mario Strikers. I didn't play the demo. I became less interested in that game as we got closer to its release. And so I don't. So this guy hasn't. Hands on this guy hasn't even played it, and he's like bitching about nothing. Like th- th- these are the kind of people we're talking about here. People who have no experience with the IP, who are just going off of hearsay, who have no idea, like what the games are actually like, or like wh- what people expect from them. Like uh, he's just bitching because like oh man, like a lot of people on Twitter are angry. Better make a YouTube video about it. Like these people need to be shit on more with the game i'm just kind of reacting to what people who i know and trust he even admits it <laughs> and its content or lack of content and features i should say the reviews are saying that the conversation is basically confirming that there's just not a lot to that game and while the mechanics are certainly fun the game just isn't really satisfying people in that respect i have no reason to doubt that mario tennis aces i did buy that game when it came out and it is probably my least favorite first party nintendo game i've almost ever played Partly because the content was in there, but also because I just kind of hated the gameplay. I didn't enjoy didn't the like kind tennis. Of mechanic to that game specifically. I just didn't like it. I returned it after a week, and so that's just a game I didn't enjoy. Now, what I will admit to you guys is, while it might seem antithetical to this conversation, my personal tastes dictate that, honestly, I really love Mario Golf Super Rush. The... Uh, the the switch yeah 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 super yeah i i i enjoyed when i played a super rush um like if if the rush mode wasn't so prominent in the story mode i probably would have played it a lot more um i I actually might someday go back to it honestly at the moment (laughs) i'm more fired up about going back to the original mario golf and and going through that one but uh, i will eventually go back to super rush i think like there's nothing really wrong with that game i would say game it also released with not a lot of content i will agree But Mario Golf happens to be a game that I actually really, really do enjoy. Now, the reason I like Mario Golf so much is simply because that happens to be a franchise or a game that I, just me, not the world, I'm not trying to speak for everybody here, okay? I just want you to know that just for me, I needed very little out of that game, okay? I just needed to be able to, this may sound weird, I just wanted to be able to turn the music off, listen to the sounds of the environment and in a very quiet slow chill relaxed pace just play some dumb mario golf with no pressure or anything behind me that is the kind of game that i like to just sit down in the afternoon after work pour myself a drink and just hang out and at my own slow pace with no thumping bumping mushroom kingdom music behind me just i just want to play some rounds of golf man i just want a bunch of courses to select from and just let me play some golf. That is all I need out of that game. Now, it's fair to say that that game, because it's Mario Golf and not Golf Simulator, that it should have a bunch of modes and a bunch of features and the speed golf thing and the RPG mode and all that stuff. You know, we want more content. We like big bombastic speed rush golf kind of modes and all these things and online modes. 
yes, the game does need to have more features than it launched with. I will agree with you to make it really worthy of being a good game. But the reason I just say I want to give this caveat why I enjoyed it is because my, my, my standards for that game are low, and I'm just admitting it. I love what it is. It is incredibly fun for the way I like to play. I have only ever touched the most basic mode where, again, I turn the music off and I just play golf really slowly to my own pace. Outside of that, I admit the game was missing a lot of content and features in the beginning. They've added a bunch of content to it. I think they did the same for Mario Tennis, and they will be doing the same for Mario Strikers. Um, but Mario Golf did release without a bunch of features, just like Tennis and Strikers. And so what's happening here? Why are we seeing this happen in the Switch era, where per my last video, I talked about how Nintendo has been killing it in the Switch era. It's not my favorite console or my favorite era, but I think it might objectively <sighs> be their best from, in terms of content, in terms of brand recognition, in terms of sales, games library. They're touching almost every major franchise, including these sports franchises. They've been doing so well, but now we're kind of on the opposite end of that conversation. And I don't think that this negates the truth of my last conversation. But it is weird that in this era where they've otherwise been doing so well, why are they making these sports games and not really delivering on the promise, you know? I, I, it'll be interesting to see after another month how people talk about Mario Strikers, because again, I don't really anticipate myself playing or picking the game up. I'm going to be distracted by, you know, the new TMNT game, and I'm waiting for the Monster Hunter DLC Sunbreak, and I'm waiting for Fire Emblem Warriors, and then, gosh, next month there's Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I'm not going to have a reason to come back to Mario Strikers. It's not the kind of multiplayer experience I really usually enjoy or look for, right? It's the polar opposite of a chill, relaxed... Well, what about the people who do like Mario Strikers, though? Like, what about the people who do like Mario Golf, who do like Mario Tennis? Like, it's just... Uh, Pretendos do this a lot, where they always bitch about, like, oh, man, I'm I'm not interested in this game. Well, plenty of people are. That, that, that's the thing. It, like, your your points hold no, no merit, really. Like, you're not even... You're talking about a game that you have no interest in, is, is what it comes down to. Relax Mario Golf, right? That's what I like. I'm not really into the Strikers thing so much. And so in another month, if Nintendo follows suit and they at least add free content, new characters and new um, arenas to play in and hopefully a couple of new modes that people are looking for, and I guess better matchmaking because I'm hearing the matchmaking and the lobby making is just not really good for what that game needs to be. Um, if they improve that stuff over the next month or two and they don't charge extra for it, I mean, that does that will work in the game's favor, and it'll be interesting to see if the conversation changes around that game. Like, even for me, when I started Mario Golf and I loved it from a core mechanics perspective, there were so few courses, I was a little disappointed, but now they've doubled the amount of courses in the last year or so, and I so I can play my favorite mode, and I have twice as many courses to pick from, and I actually really love it now for that reason. So maybe that happens with Strikers. But again, I'm getting distracted. If we get back to this question of why are we seeing this happen in the otherwise fantastic Switch era? Yeah, so uh, I think what's actually happening is what people used to do back in the GameCube and Wii eras is that they used to blow through everything, experience everything a game had to offer in like a weekend or whatever, and then say the like, oh, the, the, there's no more fun to be had, there's nothing left to do, and they would just drop the game. They would just, they would just bitch about it. So uh, by doing it this way... Nintendo ensures that people will will be coming back and playing the game for a long period of time. And um, he even admits this in this video that like, oh man, I I've I've come back to to Mario Golf after all this time. Like that that's what they're doing. Like you this is the intended reaction that to keep you coming back and playing more. And I think it's fair to say that just with these sports games, multiplayer focused, online focused, they're sports titles, they're based on rounds and matches and repeating that kind of multiplayer cycle. I think that Nintendo realizes they don't necessarily need to put a whole lot of effort into the content and features of these games, at least at launch, to get people to buy them. Because they sell very, very well, and I can't imagine they're very expensive to produce. And probably less so now that they own next level games when we look specifically at strikers. So they're not even paying to uh, to outsource from to another studio to develop this game. They own next level games now. It's all in-house. All the profits are 100% Nintendo's. 
And so, and those are Nintendo's employees now, right? Because they own that studio. So probably not expensive to make either of these, Mario Tennis, Golf, or Strikers. And I think that they also count on, if we release the game at 60 bucks and everyone buys it to the tunes of millions, even with low content, they might complain, but we're going to roll out some free content over the next year, which keeps people playing and keeps people invested and keeps people maybe buying the games for that reason. So it's a double-edged sword where it launches without a lot of content and features, but by the time a year rolls around, they've added content. Again, with that content being free, that has to be the thing that makes it okay. Do they then ultimately get to a fully featured game, but they have to have people trust that they're going to do that for the initial buy-in? It's a very strange proposition. It feels very anti-Nintendo as far as their usual business practices. Well, in terms of their games. You know, I love Nintendo, but they do a, lo a lot of other anti-consumer things. But usually in terms of their game, the quality, the finished product, the amount of content for the value, that's where they normally are almost always good and almost pro-consumer. <laughs> But the sports titles, I don't know. I think they've found themselves in a weird scenario. I don't love to see it. I think they're making some mistakes with these games. Clearly, it's it's definitely annoying people and making them upset. But at the same time, these games keep selling. How many people have I seen and have you seen that have been complaining about Mario Strikers not having XYZ content or features? But now I see everyone who bought it and is playing and posting <laughs> videos and opinions anyways. So it's like... And it's everyone's right to do so, but I just, I'm just i just pointing out, like, you know, what's your real opinion? Like, what do you really stand for here? What do you actually want? Like, I bought Mario I bought Mario Tennis because I thought it was going to be better than it was. Then I learned it wasn't, and so I, I didn't keep it, and I didn't enjoy it. I bought Mario Golf because I knew what I wanted out of it, and it delivered on what I wanted out of it. When I saw Mario Strikers wasn't going to have what I would have wanted out of it, I've chosen not to buy it. I haven't, you know, Mario Tennis tricked me. Mario Strikers did not trick me, and so I've learned, okay, I guess that's not for me. So many other people have complained about it, but they've still bought the game. So you could argue that people who are doing that are the reason Nintendo isn't learning the lesson and continuing to make and release unfinished Mario sports titles, at least in the Switch era. And so I guess it is what it is, you know. Again, typically Nintendo does pretty good with their multiplayer outings. Smash Brothers and Splatoon and Mario Kart. Those are, I think, the three big multiplayer-focused kind of cyclical franchises that they have that are almost always fantastic with a ton of content and incredible gameplay for those three unique kind of genres, fighting, racing, and, like, shooter competitive, right? Um, they've been doing great with those, but now we kind of see the pendulum swing in the other way with specifically the Mario Sports stuff. And it's disappointing. I want to hope that it's maybe indicative of just the current generation. And whenever Nintendo moves on to the next generation, which, as you guys know, I think is very likely going to be next year in 2023. <laughs> maybe they start to revisit these franchises and next generation they make another Mario Tennis and Strikers and Golf. And maybe they finally do like a Mar I want a Mario hockey game so badly. I think they would just knock it out of the park in terms of gameplay mechanics. I would hate for them to make a Mario hockey game and have it be really shitty in the terms of content and features and all that. But if they if they deliver on that stuff, Mario hockey would be amazing. I think a lot of people would like a Mario basketball game. I'd be curious. They did make a Mario baseball game, I think. Is it called Mario Slugger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a pleb. Like, ugh. Yeah, what what is there even to say about this? Like, uh, th this is the general general mindset I I get from a lot of like more casual players is that like oh so so a lot of people are complaining about this so it must be true. Well, no, people are complaining about nothing, and you're buying into the hype. That, that's what it comes down to. That's what I think the vast majority of people complaining on Twitter are doing are just are just taking these YouTubers' opinions and just believing that they're like completely accurate and. Uh, and uh, actually worth talking about when they're really, really not. Like, there is no problem with the Mario sports games. There is no po co problem with this uh, drip, drip feed content. There is no problem with modern Nintendo. There, there isn't going to be a new console next year. Um, it's just... It really needs to stop. Like, these people just need to st shut their mouths and stop talking about Nintendo. Like, they have no idea what they are talking about.